The following program is being paid for by Creflo Dollar Ministries. I'm a world changer. Destined to change the world everywhere I go. I'm a world changer. Anointed with the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm a world changer. World changer. I'll tell the world of His love and Genesis chapter 1, and I want, I want you to follow me through this progression, about five, six scriptures. Let's go through this progression here. Dear God, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Verse 26 says this, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, now, in your Bible, the King James Version has a colon there, right? And I've never heard anybody to deal with this. And we've always had a big fight over what, it, what did he mean when he say after his likeness. But he tells us that. Let us make man in our image after our likeness, colon. And now he's going to tell you what he means by after our likeness. And let them have dominion. In other words, like God has dominion and authority. Let's make a man... Let's put him on the earth and like we have dominion and authority, let, let him have dominion and authority. So that's how we're like God in the fact that like he has dominion. In fact, the, the, the authority we have comes to us from God. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Then he says, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion. There it is again. Have dominion. Dominion or authority or the right to command or I'll put it like this make him in charge Put him in charge put him in charge over all the earth put him give him the controls Get give him the controls in the earth give him dominion give him authority Now think about that now if, if God's gonna give man control over the fish of the sea, over the cattle, over the birds, over all the earth. You have control. That's what it means to have dominion and authority. You have control over all the earth. So while we're sitting here saying, oh, God is in control, uh, God said, wait a minute, I, I know I'm the head guy, but I gave you the authority and I put you over all the earth. I have appointed you, given you dominion and authority and control over all the earth. How many of you believe that? I do. I believe I've been given authority. And there are certain things that won't happen until I execute that dominion and authority. All right, now, I, before I finish this, I want to show you now. Let's go, let's go to verse 29. Well, let's finish this. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth, and God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. The Amplified says, I've given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the land, and every tree with seed in its fruits, you shall have them for food. Now, we see here God presenting to mankind two gifts. The first gift dominion and authority the second gift seed the first gift authority control <laughs> glory be to God say this out loud I have, I have been given authority, been given authority 
by the Almighty God, Almighty God. To, have to have dominion, dominion. And, control and control over all the earth. All the earth. Therefore, Therefore, I accept, I accept the, responsibility the responsibility of being in charge. Y'all don't, y'all don't get it, man. You sit up here, you think the devil's in charge. You think the tornado's in charge. You think that certain things are in charge. You're in charge. You have dominion and authority. Let me, let me go ahead and finish setting you up. All right, so we have, we have two gifts, dominion, authority. And a lot of people don't understand that word of dominion and authority. We, we just kind of been floating around it. But this is, what it's, this is what it's talking about. Then you've been given seed. The right to command. Oh, I like that definition. Did you hear what I just said? That's, that's, that's a great definition for authority. The God-given right to command. You have the right to command. You remember the sitcom? You said, I think the name of it was Charles in Charge. All right, I want you to say your name and say in charge. Ready? Creflo in charge. See, over the years, we, we, we've been misled. Religion misled us. We heard songs like God is in control. God is in control. And I'm showing you by the word. No, he's not because he gave it to us. Now, we know he's ultimately... The guy, but he, he's given a 6,000-year lease to mankind to be in charge on this planet, and he is only going to assist but not interfere. So and if you don't take authority over certain things, they will happen. And if we just sit and look at it and say, well, ain't nothing we can do, it will happen. See, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to allow the economic situation to dominate me. I'm going to dominate the economic situation by taking hold of what Jesus has given me the authority to use. Now tonight, we're going to zero in on that authority. If I am indeed in charge, then show me my weapon. Show me that which releases my authority. All right. Now, before we leave Genesis, look at verse 7, Genesis 2 and 7. Verse 7 says this, I'm going to read out of three versions. Verse 7 says in the King James, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That's the King James Version. The Amplified Bible says, then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath or the spirit of life, and man became a living being. Then the Kamash, which is a Jewish translation Bible says, then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the earth, breathed into his nostrils, and man became another speaking spirit like God. I like that one. And man became another speaking spirit like God. Why would you put emphasis on the fact that God breathed into this, this, this slab of flesh and it became another speaking spirit like God? Well, he said, I'm going to make man in our image and in our likeness, in the likeness of that dominion and in the likeness of that authority. So in order to have like dominion, and like authority, like God, you're going to have to be able to speak like God. You're going to have to be able to say like God. Now, let me just prove this to you out of the scripture first before I get to going. He's given man authority and he's given him seed. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 8. I want to dissect this like a... A heart surgeon goes into surgery for, for heart. Luke chapter 8, verse 11. Mm. 
Luke chapter 8, verse 11. Let's read 11 out loud together. Ready? Read. Now the parable is this. The seed is the... The seed is the what? The seed is the what? Okay, so now you have authority and dominion. You have a mouth and you got the word of God. So obviously the seed, which is the word of God, goes with the mouth, right? So you put the word of God with the mouth. Now look at Hebrews 1 and 3. Hebrews 1 and 3. Lord have mercy, if you just knew where I was going. Hebrews chapter 1 and 3. Everybody follow me so far. Okay. Verse 3. Here's what he says, verse 3. Let's read verse 3 out loud together. Ready? Read. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Did you notice how he said, and upholding all things by the word of his power? I always wonder, why didn't you just say the power of his word? He upholdeth all things by the word of his power. What is he talking about? He is just simply trying to show us here that God's power is his what? Word. Say it again. God's power, God's power. is his word. his word. Say it again. God's power, God's power. Is, his is his word. Say this. The word of God, the word of God. is the seed. Is the, seed. Mm. the word of God is the seed. God's power is his word. The word of God is the seed. God's power is his word. So if the word of God is the seed, and God's power is the word, then the seed in our life is the power of God, isn't it? Amen? So on your lap, you have power. So you praying for power to fall out of heaven, and the Bible says the righteousness of God doesn't say send him from heaven down here. You have the power of God. It's in the word. That word on your lap, that's power. However, the word of God on your lap is like seed. And like seed, if you leave the bag of seed in the barn and the seed in the bag and it's never planted and put in the proper place, then you'll never get a harvest or the result of it, even though you have the power to get results in the barn in the bag. Even though you have the, the word of God, which is power, in a book called the Bible, on your coffee table, if you don't take the Bible off the coffee table, get the words off the pages, load it in your mouth, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't got ain't nothing going to happen. You ain't going to harvest. All right, now, go to Proverbs 18, 21. Well, I mean, this is Bible study. That's what we do. We open the Bible and get in it, right? This ain't no speech, it's Bible study. Oh, well, praise the Lord. I, I thought we were going to hear a, a, a presentation. No, it's Bible study. We read. Find out what the Bible say. Proverbs 18, 21. All right, let's take everything we've heard so far. Now let's read verse 21. Ready, read. Death and life are in the... Hold on a minute. The, the, the what of the tongue? The, the, the what of the tongue? So the tongue has ability to get results, right? Negative results or positive results. That's what it means to, that word power is defined, the ability to get results. The word power is the ability to get results. God's ability to get results is his word. Your tongue has power. It has the ability to get results. So death and life is where? So this is my ability to get results. Now point at your mouth and say this. This is my ability, is my ability to, get to get results. This is my ability, is my ability to, command, to command, to control, to control 
this is my ability to have authority. With this mouth, I authorize death. And with this mouth, I authorize life. I choose what I will authorize. Are you following me? All right, now, let's, let's take it a little farther now. Well, let's read this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. <clears throat> they that love it <clears throat> shall eat the fruit thereof. So there's fruit that comes as a result of it. The Amplified says death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it for death or for life. So you're going to either, this is like a key that turns on the death cycle, or it's a key that'll turn on the life cycle, okay? Now, let's go to Luke chapter 10. <coughs> Luke chapter 10, verse 19. All right, now watch this. I, before we read this, in verse 19, you see the word power twice. The first time you see the word power, it is translated authority. The second time you see the word power, it is translated ability. The first time, the original word there is authority. The second time, the original word there is ability. All right, now let's read it. Verse 19, ready? Read. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, the second time we read it, instead of you saying power the first time, I want you to say authority. Instead of you saying uh, power the second time, I want you to say ability. Okay? Now watch it blow up. Verse 19, ready? Read. Behold, I give unto you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the ability of the enemy and nothing shall by an enemy hurt you. So we're not concerned about Satan's ability because we've been given authority over, over his ability. <clears throat> now, what is his ability? Well, he obviously has some. The scripture says that you have authority over his ability. Well, what is it? that he does, that Satan, Satan will do all the time. His most powerful weapon, his weapon for results, the way he's been able to get results is through, watch this, suggestions. Through suggestions. Watch this, words. Words. He's been able to come and make some suggestions to you, and he depends on you using your authority to give life to his words. You've been given dominion and authority to speak words and plant it into your heart and out of your heart grows the issues of life. In order for Satan to get his words to grow out of your heart, you have dominion. He has to dominate through seduction. Make a suggestion, get you to say it, believe it, plant it in your heart, and now out of the heart of the issues of life. Through his domination, he can get his issues to come out, and you're the catalyst that he uses to give birth to it on the earth, but because we have become so dull in our understanding of the power of the tongue, it's loose, and it's available for him to dominate the system that was designed for you to bring forth life more abundantly. Now it's being mixed with his seed and it's bringing forth some of the stuff coming and it's coming out of you. It can't come to pass without your assistance. Satan cannot bring things to pass without your assistance. He's got to have a body to have authority or to get results in the planet. Satan's got to possess somebody. Demons 
will not have a right to execute on the planet without a body, an earth suit. So that's why they want to oppress until they can use some body to get the job done. We don't want to be in a position of yielding ourselves for him to dominate and through us and our words give life to something that comes from him. He has the ability to bring suggestion. Look at the Garden of Eden. Look at Jesus. He always started with a suggestion. Always started with a word. Something he showed up saying. Something he showed up saying. Something he showed up saying. Then they begin to look at it. They begin to meditate on it. They begin to give attention to it. What are they doing? Man, they're planning that thing. They're meditating on that thing. They're doing something even more powerful. They're developing the image of it to the point where the Bible says with, with Adam and Eve, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life was de developed from a, a mere suggestion. But now this scripture says, you, the believer, have authority over his ability. Oh my God, that means when the suggestion comes, you take your authority with the word of God and you say, no, that goes against God's word. I take captive of that thought and I cast it down in the name of Jesus and I speak the word of God only. You have to become this maintenance person over your thought life. The Bible says to cast down every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Well, thoughts or suggestions that are coming against the knowledge of God, those are the, that's the ability of the enemy. You now have to execute and appropriate the promises of God and to stop that thing at the very stage where it's trying to cause conception. Like a million sperms try to go to that one egg and only one reaches it and conception starts. There are lots of things that he's going to be throwing at you to see which one can reach the place where it can cause conception. But you can put a stop to it if you'll recognize who you are and recognize what the Word says and take the ability of the Word of God in your mouth and use it to cast down his ability, your authority over his ability. And notice what he says. Don't be afraid of nothing because nothing will by any means hurt you. Nothing will hurt you. Somebody shout, I have authority in my mouth. In my mouth. Over, his over his ability. All right, now, let's go on now. Now, taking, taking all of that in, in, in consideration, let's go to Matthew chapter 16. And we'll begin right here. <laughs> Matthew chapter 16. Praise God. We will not be defeated in the midst of hard times. While Egypt is going through what they go through, we abide in Goshen. When it was dark in Egypt, there was light in Goshen. I told you one time, if the gas prices go up to $10, you'll have it. Somebody shout, no fear. no fear. If the corn goes up, and if the cereal goes up, and if the grain goes up, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. You'll have it, praise the Lord. There'll be some favor somewhere, somehow. God's already got you covered. Somebody shout, no fear. You are of the household of faith. You recognize who you are now. You gird your loins up now. You are perfectly equipped for this battle. You have everything you need for this battle. And I must remind you that the battle is still the Lord's. So if you've been kind of worrying, worrying is negative meditation on the wrong words. Uh-uh. I'm going to meditate on what God said. He's wiping out all my haters. I'm meditating on what God said. 
rise up against me and you will be subdued. I'm meditating on what God says. I got to keep my mind on the word because if I don't keep my mind on the word, you'll go crazy if you don't keep your mind on the word. Some of you would have lost your mind a long time ago if it were not for the word of God. Now it is time for all of us to rise up in what we really believe. Do you really believe this book? I'm about to preach myself happy. You in Matthew 16? Verse 19. Oh, Jesus. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And with these keys, <laughs> and you know those keys are work. You know that? With these keys, whatsoever thou shalt bind, where? Shall be bound, where? The following program is being paid for by Creflo Dollar Ministries. I'm a world changer. soul of faith. You recognize who you are now. You gird your loins up now. You are perfectly equipped for this battle. You have everything you need for this battle. And I must remind you that the battle is still the Lord's. So if you've been kind of worrying, worrying is negative meditation on the wrong words. Uh-uh. I'm going to meditate on what God said. He's wiping out all my haters. I'm meditating on what God said. Rise up against me and you will be subdued. I'm meditating on what God says. I got to keep my mind on the word because if I don't keep my mind on the word, you'll go crazy if you don't keep your mind on the word. Some of you would have lost your mind a long time ago if it were not for the word of God. Now it is time for all of us to rise up in what we really believe. Do you really believe this book? I'm about to preach myself happy. You in Matthew 16? Verse 19. Oh, Jesus. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And with these keys, <laughs> and you know those keys are word. You know that? With these keys, whatsoever thou shalt bind, where? Shall be bound, where? Yes. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on the earth, shall be loose, what? Yes. In other words, whatever you do in the natural, I'll make sure it's taken care of in the spirit. Huh? Because you know that whatever's going on in the natural is just a reflection of what's going on spiritually. Now the Amplified says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind, whatever you declare to be improper and unlawful. If you declare it to be improper and unlawful on the earth, <laughs> it must be what is already bound in heaven. And whatever you loose or declare lawful on the earth, 
must be what is already loosed in heaven. In other words, I'm only doing it based on what I already know. What I already know about heaven, that's what I'm doing. And I, see, the whole deal is we're trying to, we're trying to make the kingdom of God establish that kingdom here on this earth based on the, on this, on the word of God. And you're going to have to begin to open your mouth. You're going to have, <sighs> revelation is the key to fulfillment. Revelation is the key to fulfillment. Now this has got to be right because the first, the scripture right above what we just read says, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. For years we've read this and I, I, I don't know if but a handful of people really understand what happened right here. But Jesus began, in fact, you, you want to know the whole truth? Back up to verse 13. Mm. Look what he said. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I the son of man am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah and some other, the, the, the Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ. Thou art the anointed one, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered all right now there we go again how is he going to answer something unless something was asked so between and jesus answered and said and he saith unto them but whom say ye that i am all right now he answers that first question whom say ye that i am he says simon peter answered and said thou the, the the christ the son of the living god so he answered that question right but then he says, and Jesus answered and said unto him, wait a minute, I want to know what was asked. Then he go answering again. There's something that took place in between that verse. And here's what it was. When Peter opened his mouth, when Simon opened his mouth and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, he said, because that came from somewhere other than his brain. That didn't come from the Sunday school quarterlies. That came straight from God. And here's what he said, and I'm going to prove it to you. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. What did I say? Where'd that come from? And Jesus answered. And watch what, they, what he answered. Jesus answered unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonah, bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven revealed this unto you. So what was the answer? Where would that come from? He said, that came from God. That didn't come from your flesh and blood. That didn't come from your degree. That didn't come from your study of Sunday school quarterlies. That was revealed to you by God. Revealed to you by God. Watch carefully. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. Now, he wasn't, notice they were calling him Simon, son of Jonah. Then he says, thou art Peter. Here's literally what he says. You are a Peter. Literally, that word is translated a fragment of rock. You are a fragment of rock, or I like to say it, you are a chip off the block. You're rocky. His name was Simon. But Simon that day... <laughs> received revelation from God 
that made him more solid and caused him to become a Peter versus just being a Simon. Caused him to be a fragment of the rock. Well, my, my question would be a fragment of what kind of rock? Watch this. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock. All right, now what was he referring to? Well, what was he talking about? He was talking about that revelation that just came out of Peter's mouth. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Ooh, that was revealed to you by God. And he says, upon this rock. What rock? He wasn't talking about Simon. He was talking about revelation. Upon this rock of revelation. You are now a Peter because of this revelation you just got. This revelation has made you solid. This revelation has made you rocky. You're no longer going to be the one to, you know, you're not going to, you, you of all people know who I am because God Almighty has just revealed it to you. You are now Simon Peter. Why was it such a horrible thing for Peter to deny Jesus three times? Because if anybody knew that that was the son of the living God, this guy knew that was the son of the living God because this day God revealed it to him that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He knew it. With no wavering about it. And he said, here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to reveal to my people straight from me to them. I'm going to speak it in your heart. I'm going to start talking it to you in your heart. I'm going to start revealing it to you. And I'm going to start building my church up through the revelation I put through them. You're going to be on your way to work and at the stoplight and all of a sudden come, something comes straight from God. And you ain't got that rock and doubt no more because you know, wait a minute, that came from God. I, I feel sure about this thing. I feel solid about this thing. I know that I know in my knower. I, I'm not doubting or wondering. I know. Somebody said, how you know? I know. I was at the red light and God told me this thing and I know it. It, 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 it exploded on the inside of me. It, it didn't come from my flesh. I'm not that smart. It came from God. And he said, he said, I'm going to build my church on this stuff right here. I mean, what is it that gets people to come to church on a Wednesday night? Revelation. Something strike your spirit. You sit here trying to figure out how to get out of a dilemma. And while I'm saying one thing to you, the Holy Ghost said something behind what I said. Behind this word is another sermon. Hallelujah. 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 Sitting here minding your own business, listening to exactly what I'm saying, and bam, something drop in. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa what's that? What's that? Yeah, that's what you take notes on. You don't sit up there and take notes on every word I'm talking about. You waiting on that word behind this word. There's not going to be a breakthrough just by getting in the word of God. Breakthrough only comes when you get a word from God. You don't understand what I'm saying? Great breakthrough doesn't come from the word of God. Breakthrough comes from the word from God. See, everybody see the pages of the Bible. But how many people are hearing that word behind this sermon? When, when, when Saul was on the road of Damascus, everybody saw the light. But only Paul heard the voice. I know we're all here together. We're all here together in Atlanta. We're all here together in New York. You're all looking at the same verse of scripture. You can all see that same verse. But behind that verse, there is a voice. I'm going to build my church on that. And that's what he said. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against this revelation. And I'm going to give you the keys. What are the keys? That's revelation. I'm going to give you the keys. See, it takes, what's the difference between you got two people 
Both of them heard the same sermon, but you got two different results. One guy stayed with that thing long enough, meditated on that thing long enough until he heard God. Then he applied that key and things started happening. Breakthrough takes place when people know how to tune in to W-O-R-D. <laughs> are, you, are you following what I'm saying? Well, then what happens then when you start speaking that, being struck by revelation? See, when you're hit by revelation, you're, you're convinced. You're sold on it. Can't nobody talk you out of it. God tell you you healed and you ain't going to die, a thousand doctors can say there ain't no hope and it won't be able to change what God told you. Now this is going to require you to have some personal time with the Holy Ghost. You can't be no, no normal Christian and expect to get some Peter coming through you. You have to do something more than normal, just coming to church on Wednesday and then go home and raising some more saints. You got to do something. You got to go beyond. You got to be this supernatural person that say, look here, man, I really believe this stuff. I really live this stuff. I'm searching for this stuff. I don't just come to church, listen to the sermon and close and wait till the next session. No, I'm on this thing because I got to hear from God. You don't understand. I ain't got no more money. They let me off. I got to hear from God. I'm not doomed because I know if I get that voice from God, I'm going to know what to do. But I don't come from the class of people that curl up and die when things don't work in the natural because I got something in the heavenly place that will show up in this natural place and rearrange some things that are going on. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? I'm trying to tell you, you ain't never stranded. And if you might be stranded right now, get ready. God's getting ready to help jack you up and change your tie. You're not going to stay stranded. You're not going to stay stranded. Don't you give up. Don't you cave in. Don't you start speaking words of death that will turn the death cycle on and keep you in that place. You're from God stuck. The devil ain't in control. No, no, you need to tell him. You, look, you, you need to just pause sometimes and say, look, 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 devil, wait, wait, wait. I thought you knew. But you better ask somebody. I thought you knew that I understand that I'm in control. Now I'm getting ready to find me a few scriptures. Now just wait here. You started this conversation. I'm getting ready to find me a few scriptures. And I'm getting ready to wear your tail out. Because I run this show down here. I am a man. I've been given authority by God. I have been anointed by God. Jesus came and walked this earth to show me how to do this thing under the anointing. I am not defeated. It may look like I'm defeated. It may look like I'm down. It may look like I'm up. But when I fall, I shall arise. I'm on my way up. But, but watch this. The key to it, the key to it, I got to hear from God. Good ideas ain't going to get it in these days. Good ideas may keep, have you defeated. You got to hear from God. You got to hear from God from your, for yourself. You can be making an appointment to see Minister Carter, what the Lord say to you. Now, what the Lord say to you? He got what the Lord said to him, what the Lord say to you. And that's going to require you living a life that doesn't interrupt what God's trying to say. You're full of the Spirit of God, so bear, bear the fruit. Oh, God, help me, help me. He can't. Why? Because you got too much between you and him. Too much junk. Too much flesh. Too much corporate stuff. To in bondage the folk. Get out, get rid of all that stuff. Go, go before God naked and just say, you ain't, the prayer ain't got to be difficult. Help. <laughs> it ain't hard. But sometimes something we make it so difficult. And then we add our mouth and wrong words to assist the whole process.
only one that can see you totally defeated is you. The word is not void of power. The word is void of people who will speak it. Hear what I said? The word is not void of power, but the world is void of people who will speak it. You got plenty of power. Just got to find somebody who's going to speak it. Somebody who's going to speak it when it's not easy to speak. Most people I met, when they get upset, I don't want to hear no scripture. Now, it's real. <laughs> I don't talk, no, 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 don't talk no scripture to me right now. I don't want to hear all that. This ain't church now. Don't come talking no scripture. No, do you, that's the kind of person you need around you. Somebody that's going to talk some scripture when you're going through something. You don't need nobody around you that don't know the word when you're going through something. I just broke all over to do. You don't need nobody. Yeah, I don't. I know what you mean. I broke like you were last week. Child, my mama never were broke like that. We broke like that all our life. We always been broke. So I can sure help you out and just let you know how I feel. That what's gonna get ready to come now, so you can get ready for it. Nobody want to be around nobody like that. I want to be around somebody that's gonna say, "Look here, great is he that is in you that he is in the world." Watch your mouth. What you gonna want? What you want? You'll have what you say. Watch out. You're getting ready to give birth to something. Oh, man. I, I hope y'all getting this. So, we got the key. It's in that word that he gonna give us. Hallelujah. Check it out. Isaiah 43, verse 25 and 26. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy what? Transgression. For whose sake? For my own sake. And I'll not remember thy what? Sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Amplified 26 says, put me in remembrance. Remind me of your merits. Remind me of your merits. Now, do you actually think God asked you to do that because he was forgetful? Remind me of your merits. Let's plead and argue together. Set forth your case that you may be justified or proved right. Now here's what I wrote down. I blotted out your sins and what I will remember is what you declare. <laughs> here's what God did. God says, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take care of all that crap you did. Bam, it's gone. And then he said, all right, what you want me to remember about you? Everything I'm going to remember about you is what you say. I'm going to give you the right to write down in my mind what you want me to remember about you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. A blank mind, God says, I want you to declare what you want me to remember about you. I done got rid of everything you don't want me to remember. Now tell me what you want me to remember. Now you ain't gonna sit up there talking about law. Oh, I'm just as broke as the Ten Commandments. You don't want him to remember that, do you? What you want him to remember is, Lord, I'm the head and not the tail. Father, I thank you that the angels are prospering me right now. And that means that you are bringing that to my life right now. I'm the healed, I'm the delivered. Oh, dear God, I'm prosperous in all that I do. Oh, that's what you want. And then when he thinks of you, that's what he, that's what he responds on. That which you cause him to remember. But the question tonight is, what are you writing in God's memory banks? The first thing you need to write today is block them sins out. Let's start over. My bad. What a powerful thing. And then in Job chapter 22, would you flip over there for a moment? Oh, Job 22. Job's a prime example of what happens when you don't know you got a thought in your mouth. But around the time he started getting it right, at the end of that chapter, look at Job 22, verse 28. 
There's authority in my mouth. Say it out loud. There's authority in my mouth. Job 28, Job 22, verse 28. Verse 28 says this, Thou shalt also, what? Decree a thing, and it shall be, what? Established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. I love that. Verse, the Amplified says, You shall also decide and decree a thing. It shall be established for you, and the light of God's favor, and the light of God's favor, and the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. See, I think it's time for us to start decreeing some stuff. Instead of sitting back and listening to what the, what the news is decreeing, what are you decreeing about this? Every time anybody in my house has a, a, a nightmare or a bad dream, we take authority over it. We don't sit there and say, wow, that was something. <laughs> no, immediately we say, in the name of Jesus, that we take and snatch all the power and the ability. That dream will never come to pass. It'll never become reality. And we decree that what was seen in that dream will never take root in this physical realm. You take authority of those and you don't sit there. We just, we just kind of don't understand the importance the word is not void of power, my people, are void of speech. No word of mine is void of power, only powerless when it is unspoken. My words, my words, none of my words, no word of mine is void of power, only powerless when it is unspoken. Isn't that the truth? Powerless when it's unspoken. Decree a thing, and it shall come to pass. Well, now watch this in Psalm 91. Flip over there. Psalms 91. Verse 1 and 2. He that dwells in a secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will what? Amen. All right, now what is he saying? Finish reading. Okay, now he just said that. He said, I will say he is my refuge. Huh? All right, now look what happened in verse 9. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge. All right, now wait a minute. When did he make the Lord his refuge? If you are ever in the Atlanta or New York areas, we invite you to join us. Visit CreflodollarMinistries.org for service times and locations. It is people like you who help make it possible to spread the Word of God. We thank you for your continued support.